Well, hey, y'all. Happy Tuesday. Well, I was right. Last Tuesday, um, my husband did indeed have appendicitis. So I filmed my video and I took him to the ER because we had a little online appointment. And so about 2.45 we went in. By 7 o'clock he was having an appendectomy. And uh, I think because we got there before it ruptured or perforated, um, so there wasn't really um, an outside of the appendix affection going on, um, I think that's why he was able to come home the next day, um, which was really great for us because then we could just have him here and take care of him and have a real peaceful, kind of calm, mellow Christmas. Um, I don't know if you know, but a couple years ago, um, one of our sons um, also had appendicitis and um, we were real naive about appendicitis and so that one did perforate. <laughs> so now we know the signs and um, we don't hesitate. We just know what it is. <laughs> so we did and we, we got it done. So everybody is on the mend. He's back to work this week. Maisie's finger is all better. And so um, if she would stop babying it like she can't bend it, <laughs> she would be great. Today we're going to talk about what you can plant in January, this being our last um, week in 2021. So excited for definitely better days in 2022. Um, so first we're going to check out what you can plant um, in the month of January and I'm going to kind of do like what you can plant which is on the normal planting calendar and then we've obviously got some seedlings and starts that we can get going for um, our spring and summer garden. And then we're gonna take a tour around and I'm gonna show you everything that's growing on in my garden. So let's check it out. For vegetables in January, you can plant globe artichoke, Jerusalem, beets, bok choy, broccoli, cabbage, carrots, cauliflower, cilantro, collard green, greens, dill, fennel, all the onions, kale, lettuce, leeks, mint, mizuna, mustard, oregano, parsley, parsnip, peas, radish, spinach, Swiss chard, turnip, and flowers. Pine. We've got Urgenta, Black-Eyed Susan, Carnation, Dianthus, English Daisy, Gallardia, Geranium, Gloriosa Daisy, Larkspur, Nasturtia, Nemesis, Nurembergia, Pansy, Petunia, Poppy, Primrose, Snapdragon, Stock, Strawflower, Sweet Alyssum, Sweet Peas, and Verbena. The seeds that you're going to want to start for your spring and summer garden are going to be eggplant, pepper, tomatilla, and tomato. And with some protection, you could go ahead and start some basil. Sorry for the misspelling on eggplant up there. One of the first things I wanted to share um, was my sweet little straw bell garden that I've got going up here. Um, if you remember, most of the things, the plants, transplants. I grew every one of these from seed, except from obviously the, well, the garlic grew from its own clove. But I grew all this from seed, but all this stuff stayed in the tray a little too long. And so it really kind of took a minute to take off out here. Um, but it made me think of some good words because I like words over, um, what do you call it? New Year's resolutions. I like words over resolutions. So this bale and these plants made me think of some words. One, faith. Um, I had faith. I kept these seedlings alive, having faith that I'd have somewhere to put them. And then my second word that I'm on right now is intentional. Because even though these plants looked weak and they just weren't doing that great, and I knew the challenges they had been through, I still was intentional with their care. I came out here and I watered them every day. And in the very beginning, I kept them covered up. And now, even, I mean, this little thing right here was no more than these, this little leaf here for forever. And now it's all coming along and rewarding my faith and my intentionality in its care. So I just wanted to share this with you. Um, and the broccoli, I mean, not, not the broccoli, but the, the this garlic I, has barely been out here. Um, I put it out probably the first week of December. So glad to see it up. And now 
we'll trot off to the backyard. Well, I gotta show off my flowers first. These, this thing is huge. See, that's my hand. This is all from uh, Kabloom Baskets. Um, she put that, she, this was in my Kabloom Basket and I planted it out here in front. It smells so good. And then over here, this one got more petunias than it did the alyssum. Um, but super beautiful and I love the Kabloom Baskets. So we're taking this little tour before um, the rain kicks off and it's, look it's crazy because it, you can see those are real pretty skies but it's really supposed to rain a lot this week and this weekend we're going to be getting some 30 degree mornings like Saturday and Sunday. So I'm loving life out here in the garden. I can't like something about leaves makes me want to rake them but the ash tree is she's totally changed. She's fully yellow and she's losing all of her leaves now. So I've got lots of garlic going on everywhere. Awesome uh, tomatillas. I've got this strawberry over here has made so many runners since I put it in. So it's this plant, this plant, that's a plant. And so the next runner that kicks off, I'm actually going to put like a little container beside it and get it to start in another, um, like a small transplant container. I'm still waiting for some of these tomatoes to turn red, but you'll see when we get to the other side of the yard that uh a lot of them are turning red that are in a more sunny spot in the yard so we had a big mess of mustard greens a week or so ago and i put some of this bok choy in with uh, a roast i made and otherwise i like letting it go to flower because the bees love it and look how beautiful it is like if it was standing up straight I don't want to break it because it's got a true curve down there at the branch but you can see that I mean that's like three foot long and then you go up the stem so they're so beautiful to watch go to flower um this is another bag of brock um, not broccoli but garlic so I really went big on garlic I planted so much garlic there's even garlic in this this is a, a sage that i keep killing and bringing back i'm starting to see the beginning of some broccoli and uh that's my i'm gonna i'm gonna put this rosemary in a bigger thing the cohabri is actually starting to form out a little bit down there now so we're getting close to harvest there um my succulents are doing okay. This pepper's just gotten too big for its britches. Down here, uh, my Brussels sprouts looking so happy. Over here with um, my ranunculus, and I got all these from the Kabloom basket too. And they're starting to multiply, but I also planted some garlic in with that. And then I moved my lemongrass over here um, so it could get more sun and i also put a couple of the lavender transplant babies in here and they're doing real well and so this tomatilla has just kind of gotten too old i'm thinking after the next week or so when it's so cold i'll trim it back and see what it does um because its partner is kind of meh if, if you're starting to notice i literally have planted nasturtia in all my bags because i think that when it starts to bloom it's just going to be spilling over the sides of the bags it's just going to look so beautiful this is the never-ending <laughs> zinnia plant and um zinnia loves the summer um but this one loves my yard so she just keeps on blooming and making flowers um and if you can see she's funny too because zinnia get real tall so this is her branch and it goes over there and curls and then her desire to see the sun makes her then point up this way so pretty cool cool plant there now let's go in florida here <laughs> It always stays quite balmy in here and this is where I've got um, my choice uh, heirlooms my Cherokee purples and my great whites 
and uh, they are loving life in here and I've got a tray this is a tray of peppers and some determinate tomatoes determinate paste tomatoes and then these are mostly uh, indeterminate tomatoes and then um, down there I've got an uh, an artichoke two artichoke I need to figure out where I'm gonna put them and then like I said here's my other two and see I think this is a Cherokee purple and it's you know it's got two nice fat tomatoes on it so even though some of my tomatoes are outside these are the ones that I'm really trying to get um, to go the long haul you know so that you know they're kind of making flowers and producing fruit now but I think that if I can keep them healthy and strong then you know come March when it's really warm bada bing bada boom bada bang so let's get out of Florida and check out the rest of the yard now I moved most of my um, these plants these are all was a six pack of tomatoes I moved them over here to get them more sun and you can kind of see that one is starting to turn a little bit so this is a better spot for them and I think I might end up bringing um, the others over here too this little bed is turning out real sweet it's got um, some kale and some spinach coming up of course like I said I've tucked garlic in everywhere and my peas are really looking awesome this is uh, one of my cherry tomatoes. So I decided any cherry could handle it in the yard. Um, but my bigger ones that I wanted to go through, like I said, the winter with. And I want to put them in the greenhouse. And then lots more garlic. We've got some probably romaine and um, some red lettuces here. That's a weed. And some awesome peas going on there more garlic and I dropped this variegated sage over here garlic going in my eggplant and now I cut my eggplant back um, the original parent was just real sad looking um, and when I went to cut it I noticed that this plant here was coming off the side and that this piece didn't look so bad so I left this one to support this one and um, they seem to be doing well um, my fava beans are going good. Let's see, I didn't tell anybody, but when we had mustard greens, I put a bunch of this collard green, or red Russian kale in it. So just waiting for this one to fill back out. This has got a baby broccoli head on it. There's more of my tomatoes that I got moved. So you can see they're starting to get just enough red to want to change. I got garlic over there. And this is a yod fa, so it gets harvested differently than broccoli. You kind of harvest it according to these stalks right here. And you can tell when it's ready because it starts to make the little pre-flowers. And then you can just go along here. and So you can see we've harvested a couple times. So you just go along here and you cut that. And then you can chop it up and put it in stir fries again. We put it in a roast. Here's a sweet little broccoli head and so I've got I'm kind of coming flush with uh, the Pac-Man broccoli so I'm definitely gonna see this is a good cut in size because this is you know just a little bit bigger than my fist so if I cut all six of these this week for a meal which that should feed us then they'll start producing mad side shoots and this kohlrabi is kind of getting there it's a little it grew a little wonky but it's starting to really fatten out so maybe I'll pick all three of those at the same time now here's another example of the yod fa and I spoil my bees in the in the fall and winter so um, that's why I let these go all the way to flower because the bees love 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 these yod fa flowers so again if we go down here wherever you see the stalk kind of the branch goes out and then this new stalk comes up you see there's the pre flowers so you just cut down here so this one's got one two see then three 
four stalks that could be harvested from it and um, the more you harvest obviously the more it makes because I just harvested from this the other day too and this is a pepper that I'm trying to resurrect it got really damaged by some aphids but we're seeing what happens this is a replant of some celery like I just had the bottom of a celery thing and I stuck it in here it's kind of slow mowing um so I stuck some garlic in here <laughs> that's that's my new thing so I stuck in some garlic I got my um asparagus bed filled up yesterday and I got the wee little asparagus some of them are really big um planted in there and um I'm gonna go and put dill in between them and within the next week or so we'll work on getting a cage like this built for the top to keep the birds out and then um, we can take the trash cans off and the asparagus will just free wheel it now this is my pride and joy right now um, my onion looks great um, I've been kind of following um, the guidance of the MI gardener and when my onions start to fold over I've been going in there and trimming them um, in an effort to make kind of fatter stalks down here because these are actually long day onions um, which I shouldn't be growing them but that's what was at the nursery um, I don't know how good they're gonna do so I'm really pushing them to produce as much as I can um, I think by trimming these out so this is really turning into being a sweet bed over here I've got cilantro and then the parsley and then up front I'm real pleased all those little wispy plants in there are cumin and they've been thinned so that's those are the individual plants they're not overly grown and then here is my dill and um, so just a little bit more and I'll be able to take the cover off and the cover can work in some other places um, but real real pleased with where the garden's at and uh, real grateful to be getting the most out of what we can grow right now so oh and one thing I want to show you is um, we you remember this ladder used to be at the other house and we've done all kinds of stuff with it well I had Dale level out and put shells on here so I did have my lavender seedlings out here but this week it's gonna rain so much that's why I have them in the greenhouse because the rain is just gonna fill up the flood plan and then I have to be constantly coming out here to empty it so once we get through this week of rain then I'll bring them back out here and then we're gonna put another shelf out here so I love this we're gonna paint it and make it look really sweet but there's a little rough look at it and uh, a sweet little look at my garden one thing I forgot to share with you was I got a little baby bed for Christmas and it really is kind of a baby because it's only about two foot high I was a whim I was looking for stuff to put on my Amazon list and I saw it and I just put it on there and then I got it so the long-term home I think is actually gonna be right here because these stones are gonna be pulled out for my floating patio and with putting it right there I'm gonna have the same effect that I would putting it there and so right here I'll just create again some kind of vining structure that'll give this spot some reprieve in the afternoon and then I can have like a go into the summer lettuce bed over here um, where these lettuces will just get real real um, passive sunlight but enough to make me some lettuces well I hope that you have the best day ever I hope you have a very pleasant and safe New Year's Eve and New Year's Day and I look forward to growing into 2022 with our best gardens yet mm -hmm.